Hey Matrix, welcome back to the next video in the series where we're going through the November 2020 uh, past paper. We're doing the maths paper 2. Uh, today we're going to be looking at question 6. Uh, if you don't have the paper, please pause the video now. Uh, there's a link in the description where you can find the past paper as well as the memo. Once you have the paper, then you can continue watching the video. Okay, let's get started with question six. So question six, they've given us the following diagram. Uh, they've also said yeah, in the diagram P is negative five and 12 and T lies on the positive X axis where P of T is theta. Okay, then question 6.1 says write down the value of tan theta. So the minute we see that they're asking us to find sine, cos or tan and they've given us a drawing, it means we need to construct a triangle and 10 to 1, we need to find the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay, so over here, I've redrawn it. Okay, so what we need to do is construct a right angle triangle. So I'm going to take that line down. Okay, that means this distance here, okay, is 5, or it's negative 5. And this distance over here is my 12 value. Okay, why? Because that's at n y equals to 12. Okay, remember that's y, that's x, and this is at x equals negative 5. Okay, the next thing that you can do so long already is calculate your hypotenuse. So that's x squared plus y squared equals to my hypotenuse squared. Okay, you can call it r as well. Um, thus, we're going to have negative 5 squared um, plus 12 squared equals h squared. You can plug that into your calculator and you should come down to a value for h to be uh, 13. Okay, so that's this one here. So fill it in on your paper. Okay, now that we have that, let's answer 6.1.1. So 6.1.1 asks us to find tan. Now remember tan is y over x, the ratio for it, for the triangle. So therefore we're going to have um, our ratio is going to be negative 12 over 5. Okay, you can leave it like that or you can simplify it if you want, but that's more than sufficient. Okay, the next one's asking for cos. Okay, so cos is equal to x over my hypotenuse. Okay, which is then going to be negative 5 over 13. Okay, now 6.3 is an interesting one. It says s, which has the coordinates a, B is a point in the third quadrant. Okay, so we're over here somewhere. Okay. Um, such that TOS equals 90, or theta plus 90 degrees. Okay. And OS equals to 6.5 units. Okay, so that's the length of the line coming out towards S. Okay, so it then says calculate the B value. So we want to find the Y value. Okay. Now I've redrawn it over here. Okay, please note this length is 13 and that length is 6.5. Okay, which you can see that this has been halved. Now, don't make the mistake and say that because this is half, this here is half of that, my y value is going to be half of this value over here and my x value is going to be half of that value. That's a big no no. Okay, do not do that. We need to find how it's been reduced in proportion. Okay. So, first things first over here, um, we're looking for the B value. Now, remember with your trig functions, whenever we're looking for the Y value, it's always sine, the function sine. Okay. Cos relates to the X value. Y, the sine always relates to your Y value. Okay. But also note that we've started here and we've moved around theta, okay? And now we've added an extra 90 degrees. So we're going to say theta plus 90 degrees, okay? And that is then going to equal to my ratio of B over H prime. Okay, I'm going to call this H prime this new H value over here. Okay, so this year H prime, which means I have sine of theta plus 90 degrees equals to b over 6.5 okay but remember sine of theta plus 90 is just indicating that i've shifted my sine graph 
to the left by 90 degrees. So I've gone from this, okay, to that, which means I now have a cos function. So this becomes cos of theta equals to b over 6.5. Okay. Um, but we know what cos of b is because we've calculated up here. Yeah, so it's negative 5 over 13 equals b over 6.5. Therefore, b, once you've worked out the algebra, is going to come to a value of negative 5 over 2. Okay, so even though in this case, my b value is now negative 5 over 2, okay, which, yes, is originally half my x value, okay, so what's actually happened here is my triangle has rotated down into the third quadrant. But don't make the mistake of seeing the ratio here and just halving everything. Okay. Now, 6.2 okay, says, without the use of a calculator, determine the following expression. So we need to simplify it. Okay. So the minute you see one of these, you should be thinking about your cost diagram. Okay. So we can see over here, the first one we need to sort out is cos of negative x. So what that is saying is cos 0 degrees minus x. So if I start here and I move down, we can see that cos is positive in this quadrant. Okay, so it's going to be sine of 2x times cos of x, okay, plus cos of 2x. Now, sine of 360 minus x. That's starting again on this line here and moving down into the quadrant. We can see that sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So this now becomes negative sine of x. Okay. And if we sort out the bottom, sine of 180 degrees plus x means we are now going to be sitting over here and we're moving down into that quadrant. Okay. Which means sine is negative here. So we have negative sine of x. Okay, now we can sort out the negative of here. Um, so it's going to then be sine of 2x cos x minus cos 2x sine x. Okay, all over negative sine of x. Okay, now you should notice that this here is a double angle. Again, we're using sine a minus b. Okay, so this here is going to reduce, the top is going to reduce down to sine of a minus b. In this case, a is 2x and b is x. So we're going to have sine of 2x minus x all over negative sine of x. Okay, which is then equivalent to sine of x over minus sine of x, which equals to 1. Okay. Now, 6.3, we've been given the following expression over here. It says, determine the general solution, okay, for the following equation. Uh, 6 sine squared x plus 7 cos minus 3. Now, note that this looks very similar to a polynomial of degree 3. I mean, degree 2, sorry, my bad, degree 2. Uh, bx plus c. Okay, now we know that we can factorize these, which means we need to get this expression into a form where we can factorize it. Now, the clue here is look at your second value over here, cos. Okay, so we need this to be cos squared. So, how do we get that to be cos squared? We use our identity of sine squared uh, x plus cos squared x equals to 1. Okay, so I'm going to replace this with 1 minus cos squared x. I'm going to have 6, 1 minus cos squared x uh, plus 7 cos x minus 3 equals to 0. If we sort out this over here, we're going to get negative 6 cos squared x plus 7 cos x plus 3. Okay, that plus 3 comes from this minus 3 and that plus 6 over there. Okay, now we don't like the negative in front here, so we're just going to divide out by a negative. So we end up with this. Okay, now we've got a value in front here. So in order to factorize, we need its factors. So that's 3 times 2. 
and we need 3's factors, which is 3 times 1. Okay, which means we're going to have 3 cos x in the first bracket, 2 cos x in the second bracket. Now we just need to sort out where the 3 and the 1 goes. Okay, now note that we need both of them are negative, which means one of these here is going to be positive. So I'm going to take plus 1 in the first one, okay, and negative 3 in the second one. Therefore, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2, or negative, okay, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, plus 2 will then give me the 7 over here. Okay, but now we need the general solution. Okay, so quickly just solve this, we're going to end up with cos of x equal to negative 1 over 3, or cos of x equals to um, 3 over 2. Now if you plug this into your calculator, it's going to tell you it's not applicable. Okay, so we're only dealing with the negative 1 over 3. Okay, now if you put that into your calculator, it's going to spit out a value that is x equals to 109.47 degrees. Okay, but now we need the general solution. Okay, now please note that we're dealing with a cos function over here. And the period for a cos function, okay, is 360 degrees. Okay, now note as well that this cos function hasn't had anything happen to its period. The function hasn't shifted or anything, it's just a plain cos function, which means my general solution is going to be the reference point that we've just calculated, okay, plus then you can pick any variable you want, n, k, p, whatever makes you happy, I normally use k, times 360 degrees, okay. So why do we add this? Because the period of the cos function is 360 degrees. So starting at this point, 360 degrees later, we're going to get where it's equal to the same. Because remember, our graph looks something like this. Okay, so 109 degrees is going to be, let's see, that's going to be 0, 90, 180, 270. So it's going to be somewhere here, let's say. But the graph continues on in both directions. So we've got to find where the next point is. And that's going to be 360 degrees to the right. And if we go left, okay, it will be minus 360. So therefore, k needs to be an integer. Okay, remember integers is negative 1, 0, um, positive 1, positive 2. So it's from infinity to positive, negative infinity to positive infinity, but only whole numbers. Okay, so therefore, k needs to be an ele element of integers. Okay, now the last question. Question 6.4 says, given the two expressions over here, without a calculator, let's determine what cos 2a is. Okay, so we're looking for cos of 2a. Okay, now there are multiple ways about going about this, but I'm going to show you how to approach a question like this. So we've been given an expression with cos in, and we've been given an expression over here with x in. This one's also got x in. So we can do a sort of a simultaneous equation. I'm going to use 2, and I'm going to solve for x, and then I'm going to plug it into 1 and see what I get. See if I can get somewhere close to this over here. Okay. So dealing with 1, we have x squared plus 1 over x squared. I'm going to take the 2 across, minus 2 equals 0. Okay. Now I can factorize this because of the x squared, and I've got three terms. Okay. If it was only 2, we could try, but I'm not too sure where that would get. So we've got these three terms over here. So we know I'm going to need an x and an x. Okay. But now what's going to be these values over here? So note that this is an x squared as well, okay, which means I'm going to need 1 over x multiplied by 1 over x in order to get this term over here, okay, which means that these here are going to be 1 over x each, okay, but now we have a negative over here and we have a positive over here, which means both of these need to be 
negative. Okay, so if you had to FOIL that out, you'll see you'll end up with x times x um, minus x over x minus x over x and then plus 1 over x squared. Okay, and that will get you back there. Anyway, so we have this equal to 0. So what we have is x minus x over 1 over x squared, which equals 0. So I square both sides. x is then equivalent to 1 over x, which means I can take this across now. x squared equals to 1. So now x is equivalent to plus or minus 1. Remember, plus or minus 1. So if I substitute that into 1 now, for plus 1, we're going to end up with plus 1 plus 1 over 1 um, equals to 3 cos of a. Okay, that means we're going to end up with 2 over 3 equals cos of a. Okay, and if you do for negative 1, uh, you'll see that you're then going to end up getting uh, negative 2 over 3. Um, equals cos of a. Okay, now we need to get 2a. So we're going to use a little bit of our knowledge for um, our identities. And remember that cos 2a equals to 2 times cos squared a minus 1. Okay, so that comes from your double angle. Now we have cos of a. Remember, cos squared a equals to cos a squared. Same thing. Okay, so we just substitute in now. That's plus or minus 2 over 3 squared minus 1. And if you sort out all that algebra, you will get down to an answer of negative 1 over 9. Okay, and that's how we go about doing this question. Okay, if you found today's video helpful, then please leave a thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions regarding this question, then please leave them in the comment section below. Please go check out the channel, and while you're there, give it a follow. Uh, there are other videos for Maths Paper 1, Chemistry and Physics, and thank you for watching.